You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. Black and White Sports fans, all is not well at ESPN. ESP CNN Walt Center. It is an absolute disaster. This is probably the worst two weeks in the history of ESPN because they concentrate on Walt Sports. They have been run amok with politics and all this other stuff. They really don't focus on sports anymore. The talk shows, the debate shows, it all has a political agenda behind it. And people have tuned out. ESPN ratings on a tank. They lose money for the Walt Disney Company. They're not making any money. And the last couple of weeks, the dumpster fire to ESPN that we have actually seen, you know, between the infighting over there. Rachel Nichols on Elite Audio Tape talking about how Maria Taylor got her job because simply because Maria Taylor was black and ESPN was freaking out about their their crappy uh, history of diversity. So now, folks, Jimmy Petiro, the president of ESPN, there was a leaked memo to employees and it got out to the media. And he talked about this and he really does imply that what Rachel Nichols said about Maria Taylor he pretty much was calling Rachel Nichols a liar. So we're going to be diving into all of that, folks, in this video, guys. So here we go, guys. On the New York Post, late ESPN memo addresses complicated Maria Taylor, Rachel Nichols mess. ESPN chairman Jimmy Petiro has emerged amid the Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor spectacle. Patero, who was promoted from president and co-chair to chairman in October 2020, addressed the situation in a memo to ESPN staffers on Friday, just over a week after a leaked video exposed white ESPN host Rachel Nichols making diversity comments about Taylor, a black rising star at the network, getting one of Nichols's assignments. The leaked memo obtained by the the post addressed staff concerns about ESPN's commitment to diversity, inclusion and belonging and laid out a workplace goal to improve the experiences of black employees at ESPN. Through the network's BECE program, Black Employee and Consumer Experience Initiative. Now, guys, Jimmy Petiro had a pretty lengthy um, memo, a lot of stuff to say on this memo, I should say. But however, check this out. Over here on OutKick, it says in the memo, 63 percent of our executive leadership team are women and or people of color. He says, I highly recommend you take a few minutes to watch the video uh, tape several weeks ago to get the latest update. So the majority, the overwhelming majority of people at ESPN or minorities. OK, keep that in mind. He says this. He says, quote, we respect and acknowledge there are a variety of feelings about what happened and the actions we took, Patero wrote, noting that the details of what took place last year are confidential, nuanced and complicated personal matters. Here it is in the leak audio clip published by The New York Times. Nichols can be heard discussing her ESPN contract with Adam Mendelson, the longtime advisor of Lakers star LeBron James and James's agent Rich Paul and claim ESPN gave the NBA Finals hosting duties to Taylor, despite the gig being a part of her contract. Nichols then implied that Taylor was chosen for the job because she is black and the network was feeling pressure about its crappy longtime record of diversity. This is where Patero pretty much calls Rachel Nichols a liar. He says this. It says uh, Patero addressed the reasoning behind Taylor's NBA Finals move. Quote, I do want to be clear on one thing. Maria Taylor was selected as NBA countdown host last year because she earned it. The ESPN chairman declared, please know our commitment is that assignments and opportunities at ESPN are based on merit and any concerns, remarks or interfaces that suggest otherwise have been and will continue to be addressed 
close quote. So he right there is pretty much calling Rachel Nichols a liar because in that leak audio, Rachel Nichols, and it says it here, that job was in our contract and they took her off of that. And even this season in the uh, NBA finals, they took her away again and put Malika Andrews in place. So somebody is lying. Somebody's lying. And ESPN, I do believe, is in damage control. They are. They are in damage control. I mean, you have the Rachel Nichols thing, Maria Taylor thing, and also you have the Stephen A. Smith fallout. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. The black employees at ESPN, they are treated very, very well. Think of this. If a white person said what Stephen A. Smith said about Shohei Otani, would they have a job right now? Absolutely not. Nothing happened to Stephen A. Smith. Nothing happened to it. And also, he's the highest paid employee at ESPN, a black man. Twelve million dollars per year. Would a white man actually still have his job right now? If he said the same things that Jalen Rose said about about Kevin Love making the all star team. Well, not the all star team, but the Olympic team. Would he still have a job right now? Absolutely not. ESPN is a complete and utter joke. And Jimmy Petiro saying all this stuff, you know, really isn't even making anything better. And I already addressed the uh, the memos stating that uh, 63 percent of the executive leadership team are women and or people of color. But it goes on here. It says later on in the memo, Petiro said everyone owns inclusion before discussing how staff can help create a better culture at ESPN. Quote, it's the way you treat your colleagues, how you champion your team, how you welcome new ideas and people and how you make others feel. Each of us is responsible for creating a culture and climate that thrives. At the conclusion of the memo, Patero told staff the company plans to address diversity and inclusion at an upcoming ESPN town hall later this month, where the network will, quote, continue to have focused conversations with the black and African-American community at ESPN in the coming weeks. Now, here's the thing, folks. He already said that 63 percent of the executive leadership team are women and or people of color. Stephen A. Smith, a black man, is the highest paid employee at ESPN. Twelve million dollars per year. So they need to continue to have conversations about the inclusivity of, you know, black people at ESPN. How is that possible? I mean, most of your on air talent that you have is already black. And I believe even over here on Outkick, it even it even mentions that, I believe. And you can actually see here the picture of Stephen A. Smith it says Milwaukee. I'm on my way. Uh, NBA finals uh, game is tonight. OK. Now, over here on Outkick, it says ESPN is offering Maria Taylor more than three times what it pays Laurel. Rutledge, whose resume is similar to Taylor's ESPN, let let's Mark Jones and Jalen Rose tweet racist nonsense because the company is afraid to address them. ESPN is desperate to resign each black talent while happily cutting ties with other races. I noticed this, too. So I ask, how are black people mistreated ESPN? By the way, will anyone at this town hall address that ESPN refused to bring back Mike Golick? Bobby Car- Carpenter, Trey Wingo, and 18 others because they view white guys as expendable. Wow. So, guys, what do you think of this? What do you think of this memo put out by Jimmy Patero? And also pretty much calling Rachel Nichols a liar. Now, I don't know if NBA Countdown was actually in her contract, but she said it. She made it pretty clear. And we know the ESPN, man, they are they're so run poorly. I mean, leadership has just failed time and time and time again over there. They've gotten so far away from sports. I don't even think they know which way is up at this point. They don't. They really don't. Jimmy Patero is failing. 
failing over at ESPN. That's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white sports fans. The ship is sinking at ESPN. And Jimmy Patero did not look very good writing this memo at all. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to Black and White Sports. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.